In this section, we are going to look at another type of special function called as the fallback function. Right. So what is this fallback function? In the year 2017, when uh, so many ICOs happened, right, uh, in the fundamentals, you would have gone through this concept of initial coin offerings, where people create smart contracts, create tokens, and the people can invest into the startup using these tokens. Yeah. Many people who did not understand how a smart contract works, did not send money to the contract using the payable functions that we have created. For example, you could use the pay money function to pay to the smart contract. Your ether that you send will get added to the smart contract's balance, right? But what if you take the contract address? We all know that contracts when deployed also has an address which looks exactly similar to your normal ex externally owned addresses. So what if you go to your wallet directly uh, in the recipient column, post the contract address and enter some uh, you know, very uh, amount that you want to transfer and you click on send. What do you think will happen when this kind of a transaction happens? An externally owned account sends money directly from a wallet to a contract instead of calling the payable function that's there in the contract. The money, the ether that they send will get lost in the blockchain. It will not come to the smart contract and sit in the balance of the smart contract, but it will just be lost. Nobody will be able to retrieve that ether and start using that for their purposes. So that is a major disadvantage if you look at the entire logic of it. We need to prevent that these kind of things are happening to our investors. Our investors money are very important and we shouldn't uh, have any loopholes in our contract so that they can lose the money. Right. So remember that a fallback function is going to help you capture this kind of money. When someone sends directly to your contract address using a wallet, that money should not wander around and get lost in the blockchain. And hence, you are going to create something called as a fallback function to capture this kind of transactions and this kind of money as well. Right. Also, you can see uh, this fallback function. Why did that get the name is because fallback functions can be treated as your regular default functions. If none of the functions are being called in the smart contract, that uh, fallback function will be executed. So that is the concept of this fallback function itself, right? So go to this and to create a fallback function, yeah, you need to do fallback as the keyword. Just like constructors, which are special type of functions, have a separate keyword for itself, fallbacks also have a separate keyword. So you can open bracket, close bracket, and then say public, and it should also be a payable function. I am wantedly uh, creating an error to show you the difference between uh, public and external in this case. We'll come back to that. So this is a payable function and it's a public function. Now, what do you think is the difference between a public and an external function is that within the contract, you'll not be able to call the fallback function, right? Um, either a derived contract or the real world only can access a particular function that makes it an external function. So this error says fallback function must be defined always as external because none of the functions which is existing within the contract is going to call the fallback, right? So you have to make it external. Once you do this, this is a payable also and hence if someone sends money directly to the contract address from a wallet you will be able to capture that amount and store it as part of the contract balance, right? One interesting thing to note here is that from 0.5, right, from 0.5 solidity version to 0.6 solidity version, things changed, you know, the keyword changed for fallback. So this was given as function, right, and without a name. So when you write something called as function without a name, that is how you write a fallback function in 0 0.5. So if you go to any other examples given on the internet, it will talk about function without a name. Don't get confused with that. That was in the Solidity 0 0.5 version. And in this, you change it to fallback, right? So here, even if you have function, right, it's gonna throw an error. Expected a state variable declaration. If you intended this as a fallback function or a function with this default, then use the keyword called as fallback, right? this way and that is what fallback functions do for us 
you can also do something creative here right within the fallback function you can uh, ask whatever uh, you you can ask the smart contract to do whatever it wants to right so now i'll show you a code which can get the money that was sent uh, directly to the contract and send it back to the user itself instead of storing it in the contract can we do that yes we can right we'll just say the recipient message dot sender right whoever sent uh, money directly from a con uh, wallet to my contract that's the person i want to transfer something to him what do you transfer how much ever he sent directly i am gonna return that to the user itself without storing it in the contract so that will be denoted by message dot value right so this way you will be able to uh, handle whatever happens when someone sends uh, money to the contract address directly this is an optional thing this is completely optional you don't need to uh, write this always but it's always better right the logically looking at they did a mistake probably they have mistakenly sent to your contract so just send it back to them with a message saying uh, you know what you need to send money to the contract using this pay money function or something like that right so this is one way in which usually it is handled but it's not always necessary right so that's about our fallback function and it is always better to have a fallback function in your contract we'll see in the next section